Hi, uh, so I want to talk about a verse, uh, Daniel 9.27, and the covenant of peace. I believe that there has been a huge misconception in the body of Christ and in mainstream teachings about the covenant of peace. And I didn't discover this. Um, this was discovered by my nephew. Um, who studies ancient Hebrew and he's written this amazing book, huge book, with all kinds of amazing um, translations from the ancient Hebrew. And so in studying the ancient Hebrew along with him, uh, I believe this misconception is huge. And if you can just open your mind a little bit and think about it, because everyone's waiting for this covenant of peace that supposedly the Antichrist makes with Israel. And then that leads us into the seven years. But I believe we're already in the seven years. And that started around the uh, September 23rd, 2017, uh, Revelation 12 sign, which was really clear. And then secured around October 8th, 2017 at the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Booths, and we are in this last seven. So you can watch my other videos to get some more insight into that. Uh, but I've been trying to understand this myself, and as I read it, uh, just simply also read it um, with the Hebrew, uh, it makes a lot of sense. So stay with me a minute. Let's read. Uh, because I don't think this covenant of peace is anything like what everyone's been saying. I think most everyone's missing it. And I didn't know either until I was starting to research it. Um, so I think it's a mistranslation of who he is, who they're actually talking about, who makes the covenant. And what is that about? So in Daniel 9.27, let's start in 9.26. So we got to follow uh, who is being talked about here. So starting off in 25, um, it talks about until Messiah the Prince, there should be seven weeks and 62 weeks the street should be built again, the wall even in troublesome times. And after 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end of it shall be a flood, and till the end of the war desolations are determined. Then he, who's he? Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week which is seven years. This is what everyone thinks is the Antichrist, is gonna enter into some peace agreement, and then we're gonna have the world war happen, and then we'll be in that seven year period. So he, if you really read it simply, after, back to 26, after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. So this is when he, dies and rose again and goes into heaven. There is not a mention of another he here. We're talking about Messiah. Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. So I'd love you to uh, go on this website, www.calculatingthelast7.com. There's a 100-page, pretty easy to read printout that will help you understand this. And then if you want to order the huge book, I really recommend it. It's really amazing. I've just been studying it and reading it. I actually took Hebrew for two years, and I know some Hebrew, so when you really get the real Hebrew translation, it's so rich and amazing. And so back to Daniel 9.27, then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. So who's he? Who is he? What if he is the Messiah? 
You're talking about the Messiah will be cut off. And then he shall confirm a covenant for many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he will bring an end to sacrifice and offering. What if the Messiah brings an end to that in the end of the first three and a half years, as he himself is pouring out his spirit on all flesh, which is what he says he does. And then the second half of 27 is talking about the Antichrist. And I'll give a second talk about and probably more than that, just because to help you understand also the second mistranslation um, is about the actually Antichrist um, causing the sacrifices to cease. Because there's a whole uh, huge well of teaching that makes me believe that the there won't be the proverbial third temple, there will be a dwelling place that the Lord prepares, but there may not be sacrifices. So we'll talk about that next. So the end of 27, on the wing of abominations shall be one made desolate, even until the consummation which is determined is poured out on the detestable. So that I will have a whole nother translation for, but just think over your mind and just go, what if what if the first part of Daniel 9.27 is talking about the Messiah? The Messiah shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. So I believe this is the true translation. And I believe that if you read it simply and you don't think about what you've already heard and somebody else's teaching and how that predominantly got into the body of Christ, if you just really read it simply, um, also in, well, and another thing is the way it talks about confirming the covenant. Um, so in the Hebrew, uh, <clears throat> As to the fulfillment of Daniel 9.27, it is clearly the true Messiah is the one who confirms or strengthens the covenant, not the anti-Messiah. Traditionally, the prophecy in Isaiah 28.14 of the covenant with death made by Israel's leaders has been connected with Daniel 9.27 as the same covenant. But this cannot be the same covenant. There's a covenant of death that's a separate covenant that is probably hooked up with um, the United Nations and some other things. And then there's the covenant. The He confirms the covenant for one week, for seven days. So just think outside the box. If this is a Messiah, um, the mistranslation happened with 927 in the Hebrew. When you find the word there translates as confirms, is gavar, which means to strengthen or prevail in victory. So the covenant in Daniel 9.27 is the strengthening of a covenant that is already in place and stronger than before. Whereas the covenant with death is a brand new covenant, which had never been made before. And so it's not something that could be strengthened. So, so if it's the Messiah, if if the Messiah strengthens the covenant, if he confirms the covenant of peace with us for the beginning of the seven years, let's go back to 927, he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. So that's the beginning of the seven, but everyone thinks it's the Antichrist. And he's going to make a covenant of peace. So they're all waiting for a peace agreement in Israel. But if it's the Messiah... So he can't, the Antichrist cannot make a covenant. He can't make a new covenant if the Hebrew says he's confirming a covenant. He has to confirm or strengthen a covenant that's already there. And there is no covenant of peace with Israel to be strengthened. And it doesn't necessarily say Israel. It says with many. It says he will make a covenant. He will confirm a covenant with many for one week. So if Messiah, which is who we were talking about in 25 and 26, if that's Messiah, if he is Messiah, not the anti-Messiah, then the Messiah himself has been strengthening the covenant since the beginning of the seven years. So if the beginning of the seven years, 
started around the time when he gave us the great sign. Like I said to him, do I need more confirmation to give this talk? No. We have the blood moons on the Feast of Israel in 2014 to 2016. We have then the great eclipse across the United States. And the Lord said there will be no other sign given than the sign of Jonah. And in the time of Nineveh and Jonah, there was a huge eclipse that crossed the nation before God was uh, ready to deal with that nation. And then we had the Revelation 12 sign on the Feast of Trumpets, which everyone saw in the whole world. The whole world was following it. Anyone who was following scripture was astounded at the Revelation 12 sign. This was the huge sign. And I had a party that night. I had a feast. I invited all my friends to celebrate the end of the beginning, the, the beginning of the end, the, the, the last seven years. I mean, I felt it. I felt it in my spirit. And I, I looked up that night. It was uh, September 22nd in Israel, 23rd over here in the United States. I looked up at the sign in the stars and I, I couldn't see all of it. I could just see the moon and how bright everything was. And I felt it. I felt that peace. I felt that perfect peace that my Messiah gave us the great sign. There hasn't been a great sign in heaven like that since the star of Bethlehem. That was the only other great sign given. And this is a similar sign, but you need to itself, Revelation 12 sign, you need to look it up if you haven't studied it. And when the star of Bethlehem happened, only the wise men, the wise men who were following the signs and the stars, they knew that the Messiah had been born and they came to worship him. And even his, God's own people did not know. So I'm saying right now that God's own people might not know what's going on. And there may be this deeper revelation that if you really think about it, we are not going to get that covenant with Israel, with the Antichrist. It's, it, it's always not, didn't make sense to me anyway, because it didn't make sense to me that everyone in Israel is going to be deceived by this Antichrist. Because these are God's people. They're like chosen people. They have, um, they are still have their chance to know Messiah. So if it's Messiah who confirms a covenant that he already had with us, which I already, I totally believe is happening. I totally, totally believe it. I believe the seven years started. I felt that strengthening of his peace. I feel it strengthening me daily. I feel, and this will increase more and more until the three and a half years. And at that time, which will be around 2021, he's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. There's going to be a great latter day outpouring at the same time the witnesses come, the two witnesses at the same time, the 144,000 are there. And it's going to be a powerful time. And I felt yesterday so clear, God was saying to me to tell you all um, those who fear him and those who know him, he is going to continue to strengthen that peace. He is going to continue to strengthen that peace until he comes and he returns on the clouds immediately after the tribulation. When he returns in the clouds and he calls us forth from all the four winds of the earth, He's going to continue to strengthen us. So as times get rough, and I know this for my own sake, in the greatest times of suffering and persecution I've had, I've had the greatest peace around me. I've been in bubbles of peace when people were vile to me and rude to me, and I suffered physically, much suffering physically, and much suffering from the enemy. And I believe He's strengthening that covenant of peace that he has already began to strengthen us. In the fall of 2017, began that seven years. And we are being strengthened. We who believe, we who are in the inner sanctuary, in the inner threshold, we who are worshiping in the temple of Yahshua, 
our Mashiach and Yehovah, we are being strengthened and we're going to be strengthened and so that when the great persecution happens and whether we are flown into the wilderness to be protected or whether well, no matter what we have to go through, we're going to have greater peace. There's going to be a bubble of peace around you, whether you're being persecuted, whether you're going to have to be facing martyrdom. Christians get martyred every single day, every five minutes in the world. And, and if you read about the martyrs like Stephen, he was filled with peace. So I'm not saying I want to be martyred or anything else. I'm just saying that it's the Messiah himself who strengthened our covenant. He strengthened his covenant since he came, since he covenanted with us. And now during the seven years, it's going to be an amazing pouring out and strengthening of his covenant with us, his covenant of peace. So I feel like the Lord was really like, you have to tell this message now because everyone's looking for that peace agreement in Israel and then sudden destruction comes. But I'm saying to you, I don't think that peace agreement is coming, not anything to do with the anti-Messiah. And that the sixth seal is going to open. I mean, we are going to experience war and um, the great earthquake and my prophecies about the World War III escalating by this summer, 2019. Um, I believe that we are, all these things are happening now. And you can look up the links below. There's tons of great stuff. I really encourage you to get this book. This amazing, huge book. Because uh, it's like only $20. And uh, if you really study it, there, it's, the, it's the counting of um, time. It's the counting of the sevens. Um, my nephew studies genealogy, and he studies Hebrew uh, and world events, and he studies all the time because he suf he's suffering since he was 17. He's, he's, su he's been suffering and studying. And the Lord has used him to really have this amazing insight. And when I started these videos, um, I said this all makes sense to me because it all lines up with things I have had when I had the vision at the end of the universe and when I had the prophecy for 9-11 and what that entailed. Like these, these pro these, This timeline is in my soul. Like It really makes sense to me. So I feel like the Lord really wants you to just open your mind. I'll, I might be wrong, but if not, then we're just looking for the wrong thing. We're looking for the wrong thing. And then the destruction and all that stuff, you know, is happening. It's going to happen. There isn't a certain set thing that starts that seven years from this time on because it's already started. We're already in it. We're in the middle of it. Jesus loves to do stuff like that, didn't he? Like, he just wants you to pay attention to him. And he was always, like, hiding from the Pharisees. And so I just really encourage you to um, spend some time, look at the link, uh, read about it. So, and he strengthens the covenant for, with many for one week. And in the middle of the week, he causes sacrifices to cease. So the true Messiah who strengthens the covenant for one week and then ceases the sacrifices um, would mean that at that three and a half year period, which is coming up pretty soon, everything's going to change. I mean, we're going to have the false church be more false. Um, the whole great falling away, I thought, meant more like us sinners out sinning and everything. But when you study some of the mainline, mainstream preachers right now, they are not preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. They, they are going so far off the track and, and preaching that everyone can get in. So um, anyway, just uh, look this stuff up. It's really awesome. Uh, the three and a half years, of course, at the end, we're no longer his bride. We're his wife. You know, he takes us up with him. 
So I'm going to do another talk then about the second half of 927 and also about the misconception that there actually has to be a full-on temple built with sacrifices going on in it because it is a clear from the Hebrew that it is could be any t dwelling place like a tent anything that the Lord has set up like a temporary dwelling place uh, that is in place for three and a half years and it may already be built so I've got some special insight for that so subscribe if you like my channel I'm praying for you uh, I thought of one thing again like God never talked to the mainstream. He never did. It, it narrow is the way. Narrow is the way. Study for yourself. Really study for yourself. And when it feels right, it is right. So really just like really study for yourself. Um, and that's, I guess, not always true. But it's God confirms it in your spirit. You know, he confirms it. And you'll, you'll just start to feel that confirmation. So give yourself, you know, a day to really think about this and really look at the scripture and see if that he comes right after Messiah and ask him if he's already started the seven years and if he's strengthening that covenant with you. So anyway, because it's awesome to kind of know what's happening so we don't have to be surprised. All right. Love you all and God bless. Okay, take care.